Hi, I'm Jane. I'm the DOC site lead for Living Water, which is a partnership between DOC and Fonterra. Uh, we're here today with Cawthron. We've been doing fish surveys on the Waituna Creek. We've done before surveys, before we put in some of our, our structures, our, our rehabilitation of the creek. Uh, and now today we're looking at, at the after, so we'll see, see if our, our rehabilitation has made a difference to the creek and, in terms of fish biomass and numbers. The Waituna catchment flows into Waituna Lagoon, which is an internationally significant uh, Ramsar wetland. So it's got really high biodiversity values. But the catchment flowing into it is also a really productive place for um, farming. So there's a lot of sheep and beef farming and it's a really productive place for dairy farming because you get a lot of good, good rainfall and, and that sort of stuff. There's a lot of concerns about the um, lagoon downstream. So yeah, there's been steps being taken um, over the past 20 years or so to make it work for both the farming community and improve biodiversity values and, and maintain the biodiversity values that are here. We've got a, a vision down here as, as, as a catchment. Um, mana ora, mana kiuta, mana kitai, mana wai, mana waituna, which is that the, the well-being and the life force of the lagoon and the catchment and the people that live within the catchment, the farming and Tangata Whenua and the recreational uses have got a really great place to come. All the work to date so far has really been focused on the lagoon and protecting the lagoon. Um, but this stream in, in the background here is actually the, the main stream that feeds the lagoon. And essentially there was sort of very little work going on in the, the stream, but this is a really important part of the picture because it's basically just the, the flowing part of the lagoon if you like. Five years ago now um, went through a rebattering uh, which was to address the sediment inputs into Waituna Creek and, and then into the Waituna Lagoon um, and that was done by the Regional Council and that was done to target sediment but what we found was that while this might target sediment it, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't great for fish habitat. So what we've done is we've trialled uh, putting some of that fish habitat back in uh, by anchoring uh, large logs, so three metre long logs, into the creek bed and modifying that rebattering a little bit so we now have benches in it, like a two-stage channel, which means that we can plant right up to the water's edge um, and provide some overhanging vegetation for fish as well, among several other benefits. We've set up a before-after control impact study design, so we've measured the fish community before these structures went in place, and this um, sampling effort that we're doing right now is, is one year after the structures have been in place. So ideally I want to see a whole pile of fish moving into all these structures but we'll just have to wait and see because this is a trial, it's an experiment to see if it's working. The other thing that's important is that these things take time so it's going to take probably more than a year for the fish to find and, and um, move into these structures so hopefully we'll see um, an increase in the fish population particularly the eels um, we want to see more longfin eels. We might see some giant kokapu moving into um, these areas. We're doing a pretty intensive process, sampling process to get these fish data. Uh, it's not easy, it takes a lot of person power and so basically we're electric fishing the reach. So what we do is we net off the reach, the treatment reach that we've got and we put a stop net in place at the top of the reach and in the bottom and we've got a 40 metre long reach and then we're doing full quantitative electric fishing. So basically we fish with two, two electric fishing machines we fish systematically down the reach in a sort of grid pattern and we try and capture as many fish as we can and we keep fishing that reach until we're pretty sure that we've got a, a depleting number of fish so that we can estimate the total fish population in that reach and then we're weighing and measuring every single fish so we're getting about 2,000 fish from a 40 metre reach um, most of them are these tiny little um, bullies, common bullies, giant bullies and there's a few redfin bullies as well. And what we can use that data for is we can convert those data into density of fish species per square metre and biomass per square metre. And those are the metrics we, that we're using to assess the performance of, of this project. What I guess we're really looking for in terms of the outcome um, is, is to see uh, fish species flourishing in these reaches of the Waituna Creek. One of the outcomes of this project is hopefully to show that you can actually increase um, environmental outcomes within farmed streams. And this, this entire catchment is farmed, so if we can show that um, we can take steps to improve the ecosystem, in particular the, the fish communities which people really care about down here, it will be a really positive result. Because for us, um, for Iwi anyhow, we know that if the land's healthy and the water's healthy, then the people will be healthy. So there's that balance and um, that's what everyone's striving for in this catchment. All of us, uh, you know, right from the top of the catchment, farming right down to the bottom and the recreational and uh, Iwi in the future, really hoping to get a connection back to these places and 
be able to bring um, some of our children and our mokos and the future generations will have an, op an opportunity to come in here and get a tuna, you know, go and get a koi and those sorts of things. So that'll be, that'll be the ultimate. Great farming, prosperous farming that's got a great balance with the natural environment and biodiversity, recreational, walking tracks and all those sorts of things. That's, that looks like a, sounds like a good future for us.